Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be walking you through how to clean and lubricate your FN509 pistol. The good folks over at Gun Pro Deal sent this one out to us and we're going to uh, walk you through it just like this is your first gun and you don't know anything about gun maintenance. So hopefully it'll be a little bit better than the instruction manual, but without any further yapping from me, we'll go ahead and get into it. Before we get into actually cleaning the rifle, I'm going to show you the tools that we're going to be using. We have a super technical toothbrush here and then we also have these picks here these are from tipton they're polymer picks what's nice about these versus like uh, dental tools that a lot of folks use for cleaning is that they're softer than the surface on the gun so it's not going to scratch your gun's finish up or anything like that and then we have this little uh, pistol rod here i believe the fn 509 comes with one most pistols do and we're going to use that to go through the barrel and these two bottles here are both break-free CLP. They're just uh, repurposed into smaller bottles for easy use. I buy the big one and then put them into smaller ones, of course. So uh, all that stuff, there will be links down below in the video description if you guys want to pick some up. We're going to be using cut-up pieces of t-shirt. However, if you guys want to use a specific 9mm or a 30 cal patches, you can do so uh, if you choose to do so. So uh, with that aside, what we're going to do, first thing is make sure our gun is clear. We're going to drop our magazine by hitting the magazine release right here. And it should come right out. Uh, there's no ammo in there. We're going to want to make sure that if there is ammo, put it off to the side so that way you're not going to accidentally put it back in your gun. At this point, we're going to push up here on our slide lock and slide release button while pulling back on the slide, just like so. And at this point, we can ensure that the pistol is unloaded. There's no brass in there. There's no magazine. So we're going to rotate this lever here 90 degrees. At this point, you can let it go home. And some folks uh, say that it'll come off without pulling the trigger. Mine doesn't, so you gotta pull the trigger. Of course, point it in a safe direction. Now we're gonna pull our recoil spring assembly out right here. Then we're gonna pull up on our barrel and pull it out as well. At this point, the pistol is field stripped. This is as far as we're gonna take it down for the cleaning. The first thing I like to do is run a patch through the actual barrel itself. Um, now this one actually might be a little bit big for it, but the reason we do that is break free CLP. CLP stands for cleaning lubricant and protectant, but what it does is it breaks down carbon. Um, so any kind of carbon fouling that you have inside your barrel, uh, you guys can see it. Some, some's going to come out just as we run the patch through it, but the little bit that's in there is going to continue to break down the carbon uh, as we do the rest of our cleaning here. So we'll set that off to the side. I like to just spray a little bit of uh, CLP on there, get it on the surface, and just work it around all the way around the barrel. Uh, it's important to get up in here in these locking lugs because they tend to collect carbon for sure. And we want to make sure we get right on the uh, feed ramp as well because that needs to be clean for the rounds to feed properly, of course. We're going to move on to the slide now. I'd like to put a little bit of CLP back here at the rear and then also up front. Same process. We're going to take the toothbrush around, just loosen up that CLP, make sure it gets onto all the different surfaces so that way it can break the carbon down as we go. Um, you can see I kind of have the uh, slide angled downward, and the reason is you don't want to have a whole bunch of uh, oil in your striker channel now. The uh, FN design has the opening back here, so some of it's going to get in, and that's okay. But whatever's in there, if you kind of clean it with the breech face pointing down, you'll have less of a chance that you will... Uh, have some in there when you don't want it to be. One spot you want to be especially careful of is this extractor right here. You want to make sure that you get up under there uh, because that is what attaches to the case and rips it out when it recoils. Um, for our re recoil assembly, speaking of, just like to get a little bit of CLP on there, wipe it down. Um, there's not a ton to this one, but just getting the carbon off there that we can certainly isn't going to hurt. For the frame, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We're going to spray up here in the front towards the front of the trigger assembly and then back here at the rear as well. One thing I'll tell you is a lot of folks who are new to guns really want to get stuff as clean as possible. That's a good thing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes folks like to go poking around in places in these uh, pistol receivers that they don't have any business poking around in. So uh, we just want to, again, wipe all the, uh, or rather, clean with the brush, all the CLP and carbon up that we can, but don't go sticking tools down into little compartments um, because it's made so that way 
during normal operation, normal cleaning, you don't have to do that. Now that everything has a layer of CLP on it, we're gonna go ahead and start back where we started out with the barrel, run the patch through it. Uh, this I'm using just the opposite side of it, but you guys can use a clean patch if you want. And uh, now's a good time to discuss how clean is clean. Um, some guys like to run patches through their barrel until they literally come out the same way they went in. Um, so if that's you, uh, good on you. Um, me personally, I run it through a couple of times and I generally call it good. We're going to call that good for the purposes of today's video right now. And uh, we just want to get any kind of excess CLP off of all the parts that we applied it to. The thing of it is, you'll never get all the CLP off there, so uh, just pointing that out because some of you guys out there are going to be working to get all of it, and it never will be completely off, and uh, that's by design. Like I said, this, the CLP is designed to continually break down carbon, so that small layer that's on there is going to continue to work on the carbon that's in your gun, and it's also going to give you a little bit of protection against the elements as well, uh, rust, corrosion, those sorts of things, so it's a good thing that you're actually not getting all of it. I know that seems counterintuitive, and your drill sergeant in basic training may have told you something different, um, but you don't have to check this gun back into the weapons room. It's uh, for your personal use, and I'm going to tell you, a little bit of CLP on there is a good thing. Uh, you can see as we go up underneath that extractor here with our tool, it's coming out pretty black, and uh, there's a reason I brought it up earlier. It's definitely something you want to have clean up there in the breech face. So I'm going to keep going around there. Uh, just getting up all the CLP we can, as well as all the carbon. One area you want to pay special attention to is the rails. I already went in there, but it's a contact surface during the operation of the pistol, so you want it to be uh, free from any kind of carbon or residue that gets in there. We're going to do the same thing here on the frame. Again, just kind of going around the big spots, wiping everything up. And then we'll get in there with the pick a little bit. However, like I said, don't go poking around where you don't need to be. Um, we want to make sure that we also focus on these rails right here because just like on the slide, those are contact surfaces uh, and we want to keep them uh, carbon free. So we're going to get in there. Any open areas that we can get to like back here in our trigger housing and sear block area. Again, if you can get to it, cool. If not, no biggie. Same thing here in the front. And one thing to think about is that this takedown lever here does rotate so you can get it uh, in the position that it would be when it's disassembled naturally, like we just have it here. And then you can also rotate, to get, rotate it rather to get the back side. The next step is to lubricate the pistol. So you can look here on this barrel and you guys can probably see some wear marks as you look down it. That's normal use. So anywhere that you see wear is something that you want to lubricate just as a general guide to it. I uh, just put a thin coat all the way around the barrel. And then we're gonna put a drop down here on the barrel hood because that is a friction surface, just a drop in there as well. We're gonna put our barrel back in. Some folks uh, like to put a little bit of CLP here on the recoil spring. I'm not against it. Uh, I say go for it, ain't gonna hurt anything. And we're gonna push in and down to get it to lock in with the barrel, just like so. At this point, we have a choice in terms of do we want to lubricate the frame rails or the slide rails because really it's the exact same thing once the gun is together. I should also point out, put a drop down here on the barrel uh, where it cams and then I'm going to run, just for today's demonstration purposes, the actual CLP down there in the rails. Again, the exact same thing could be accomplished by putting lubricant here and here on the actual uh, frame. Back here, not a whole lot to lubricate on the frame itself. One thing you want to pay special attention to, though, is that your magazine well is free of oil. There's absolutely no need for any sort of oil or CLP to be down there in your mag well. It's designed to operate dry, so we want to keep it that way. Next, we're going to put the slide onto the frame for the final part of reassembly. We're going to make sure that the little grooves there on the slide match up with the rails on your locking box. Slide it back. At this point, we're going to push up here on the slide lock, slide release lever, and pull the slide all the way to the rear, making sure that it is engaged. At this point, we're going to rotate our takedown lever 90 degrees back to where it came from, uh, and we're going to let the gun go home. Uh, my hands are a little bit oily, and so is the outside of the gun. It's a good time to wipe it down. Make sure you get any sort of excess oil or CLP off of there from what you've been using uh, during the cleaning process here. And the last thing you want to do is just do a quick functions check, make sure the gun's going to work next time. 
uh, you choose to employ it. So what we're going to do again, lock it to the rear, make sure it's clear. No rounds magically went in there. We're going to point the gun in a safe direction, press the trigger. And you want to hold the trigger to the rear. And we're going to cycle the action by running the slide again with your trigger still pressed to the rear. At this point, we're going to let it go. You should feel and hear a click just like that and that means your pistol is good to go you can either put it in your safe load it back up put it in your holster whatever you want to do it should be ready for the next range trip and should be performing as well as possible if you guys have any questions about the process you can always post those questions down below in the comment section as always a better place to reach me though if you do need me is over at my facebook page that you see here on your screen i see more messages over there and i also post a bunch of deals and sales and things like that um, so if you guys want to follow me over there i would certainly appreciate it but i appreciate all of you guys watching the video if you're not subscribed please go ahead and hit that subscribe button i hope to see all of you in the next video